Hello guys and welcome back to the SADPC. We're here for the last day of the week of Division 1. We have probably one of the most exciting matches today, uh, or in the week in general, as Apple King of Kings face off against Lava. Apple King of Kings, a team that made some recent changes, but still has been looking really good, the potential dark horse of South America. And Lava, a team looking to get back on that pedestal, they were held on back in the Singapore Major. Who's going to make it? We, we don't know, but we do have great analysts to try to predict it. My name is Ava Plus, and I'll be joined here by wonderful RDO and Duster once again. RDO, how's it going today? I'm very good. Very excited for the matches today. Yeah. Is, is it nice to finally get to talk about a Brazilian team this time? You get some uh, true insight up. <laughs> I know Apple Kings like the, the Terrorblade, so I'm actually excited <laughs> for it. Yes, yes, it's true. Uh, very. Duster, uh, what are your thoughts on today's matchup? Do you think Lava is going to be able to well, show up? Yeah, I, I would prefer uh, Lava in this matchup. Uh, but really? uh, it will be exciting to see Apple Kings with a new player also. Uh, Lava didn't change anything, so it's mm -hmm. you kind of know what to expect from them already. But uh, Apple King is going to be new, so I'm excited to see. What what is your current consideration on Lava as a team? Because obviously a team that does does so well in a major, then bombs the TI, like they've been everywhere. So what, where do you think they stand right now? Hard to say. Like they spend so much time together, so I don't know how it's inside the team. But uh, when you spend so much time together like this, I know that relation between players can get a bit uh, exhausted. But uh, I don't mm. know how it's inside their team. But uh, I know that, for example, me and Ardio played together for more than a year, like two maybe. <laughs> And uh, we had uh, many issues, so I can expect a team like Lava that stuck together, even with the TI results that for sure they didn't like. Uh, mm -hmm. Wonder how it is inside their team. Yeah, yeah. Can you can you explain the situation to me a little bit, uh, RTO? Like, if you've been in a team where like you've got like a pretty bad result, and you decide to stick together despite that, and just continue onwards. Like, how how does the conversation go then? I, I have no idea how to explain it, but the uh, you get like exhausted of seeing the same face over and over again, and the you start. I, I don't know how to explain it. It's actually such a hard question for me. I think Duster can explain it better. Okay, like you kind of get tired of the person pretty much because <laughs> when you when you stay together with a teammate for so long, you kind of. Uh, mm -hmm. Personal things kind of get in the way of Dota, you know? You kind of start having more uh, personal things, not only Dota, like kind of uh, habits that the person has and stuff like this. And I know that Peruvian, for example, they always, they all of them live together in gaming houses. Mm -hmm. So it can be even worse. Uh, right. So, so you, you talk about like, I don't know, you, there's something about how they don't clean their certain their kitchen or how they cook their food or something. And all of a sudden that starts to bother you after like a year. Uh, some habits, they, daily life habits can can get to your skin once you stay together <laughs> with a person for so long, you know. But do you think there's a buildup of loyalty as well, though, that comes with it? Like, you, you know these pe people better than anyone else because you've lived with them for like two years at that point? Yeah, for sure. And you also have more intimacy to talk about... Uh... Dota and like uh, personal things. So mm. sometimes you can fix personality issues because you feel free to talk to the to your teammate in a more intimate way. So you can mm. say like, "Hey, I don't like this type of thing that you do. Uh, that's not Dota related. Maybe something like a habit that the person does." And when you're a new teammate, you kind of don't feel comfortable uh, criticizing something more personal on the person. Yeah. But okay. long-term teammates can have more freedom to say. Interesting. All right, let's go back to the the, the Dota part of it. Uh, RTO, what, what do you think of uh, Lava as, as a Dota team in general? Like when you when you saw them stay together, did you think okay, this team has chemistry? I've I've liked how they played, or or what what are your thoughts on them? Yeah, I think they have a lot of chemistry between each other, and they also play lots of play styles. So it's kind of hard to outdraft them and this kind of stuff because they can do anything. And mm -hmm. this is probably because they're together for so long. They created trust on each other for like, uh, well started to play more of a carry on mid lane or the off laner guy to play more of a greedy off laner. And in, you kind of sacrifice yourself as a carry so the other two lanes are going better. 
Mm -hmm. It all comes from from trust. And when I actually want to touch on this playstyle thing because when you watched the decline per se of Thunder, well, that back then they were Thunder Awaken or Thunder Predator. Uh, there was a lot of criticism towards them saying that they kind of didn't have a style. Like they just kept swapping around. They didn't really find their identity. Did you did you see that as well? Like they would do lots of different strats. Yeah, for example. Sorry, can you can you make can you ask? Yeah, sorry. Uh, what I'm what I'm trying to say is when when Thunder Awaken was starting or Thunder Predator was starting to decline, now lava, right? Uh, many people criticized them because they kept going all over the place with their drafts. Like they didn't have a clear idea, and it seemed like they can just play anything, but they didn't really stick to anything well. Did you also notice that about them uh, during the decline, or do you feel like they actually do have a defined style that we don't see? I feel like they're, they're open to everything, and this is kind of good, but some sometimes can backfire. Like, mm, they have okay. some losses because they just try to do so many things and it doesn't work like that. Sometimes doing the basics is better. Okay. So we get right into the draft. Apple King Kings will start with something they've been doing for last season as well is the Bane Konka. And we're going to have the Mars as the start for Lava. Uh, Benny Konka, honestly, really impressive. That's why they've been running the Bane with him as the uh, safe link combo. But of course, always a flex pick. You guys think this is uh, okay still in the current meta? The safe link Coco? I think it's yeah, still it, playable. It's very strong lane. Like, uh, I think you pick okay. mostly to win the lane and kind mm -hmm. of snowball from it. Do you, do you find that Kunka has a, a clear peak though as a carry? Like, Do you like combining him with a second win condition in the mid lane? Better if you can pick uh, more of a post one in mid lane. Something like mm -hmm. Templar Assassin, Lina. Something that can at least do building damage, uh, DP. Because Kanka, yes, he's gonna snowball and win his lane, but he's not gonna take objectives, pretty much. Right. And then you combine that with Bane, who's in the same position, right? So you don't... <laughs> you have zero push in the first two picks. Lava, on the other hand, having a lot of push already with that Leshrac pick. Uh, what, where do you guys find the Leshrac right now in the meta? Because it hasn't been picked too often these days, uh, RDO. Uh, I think the hero is strong, but it's only strong when you can, like, cover it. Either with bends or with a good save. And in this case, they pick on Nate, so they can bend three here, three counters of Flash, and he, mm -hmm. he's strong for the entire game. Because the, the problem of this hero is when he gets slowed down on early game. Is, is this for any position you play him in, or is this like specifically for, say, mid Lash or something like that? It's more about the mid Lash because it's where he mostly snowballs. Right. When you play okay. offlane, you usually go for the mech build or some kind of tanky stuff. You're not really the snowball hero. You're just there to deal magic damage on early game and create space for your carries. Mm. Would this fall into the uh, Leo style kind of carrying the game style that we talked about for Lava? I think it's still opened. I think they want uh, the Apple Kings picked Kunka to lane against Mars and the, mm -hmm. the Lava team picked the Lash to lane against Kunka. So they have the upper hand, kind of. Okay. Uh, talk to me about this uh, Lush offlane, Duster. I'm sure you have to face that against Whisper at some point. How does it feel to lane against that hero? <laughs> uh, when you pair with a good uh, post 4, it's really, really strong lane. Because it has a mm. lot of kill potential with double stuns. And he takes your tower early on. You, you yeah. need to, to play this matchup, you kind of need a, a post 5 that can clear the wave. And in this case, Kanka does it well, like he can uh, just kill the wave and Lash won't feel comfortable to take the tower. It kind of works both ways. If you play the sidelines, I would prefer... I would give the upper hand to Kanka, actually. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, as the... Uh, when Whisper was telling me about this hero, he said that once he hits six, there's very few heroes that can stand in lane against him. So would you put Kanka as one of those that, even though Lash has the Pulse Nova, he can actually still hold his own? No, he definitely can't stay on the lane alone, but he has a lot of kill potential with uh, X mark and right. plus one TP. So you can stop the Lash push. He's gonna feel constantly afraid, because if you go to, to his tower, you just X, TP a mid laner, and you can easily kill him. Yeah. Is there any Don't worry, though? Lane. Yeah. Is there any worry, though, for Lava's draft that you presented two, two cores already? Or actually, do you guys think the Mars can be flexed? Because this is the team I think that flips it the most. Into the five position, I mean. 
Yeah, you can play Mars 5, in theory, mm -hmm. but uh, it's not a problem to show two cores like this, they're pretty solid cores. And also, uh, Mars can go mid, he can go off lane, they're two flex picks. So you still have some freedom. Right. So, so you're okay with showing cores if they can change between the lanes, is what you're saying? Yeah, for sure. You, in the end, you can still choose the perfect matchup for you. Alright, nice. Okay, let, let's see how these uh, lineups shape up. We see the, the Tusk and the IO band here for Apple who are deciding to get rid of supports here. That will make the lanes hell for them. Uh, Tusk completely back in the meta, it seems like, at least in South America. Uh, does, does this hero ever leave? <laughs> this, do you guys just... <laughs> it's just brawling constantly with this hero. As Pretty much pretty just, much a, just brawler. a brawler. The SA loves it. Uh, yeah, I was also stronger because of the new shard. With the bigger yeah. the bigger first spell that deals DPS. So you can also deal with waves. You're not only the brawler anymore. The game... Uh, back then, when games go like just pushing waves and farming, Tusk feels really bad, but now he can also farm. Mm, okay, nice. I'm glad you explained that because Duster also mentioned the shard. He's like, yeah, it's really good. I, I see the, the small farming patterns. We did see it, its strength against uh, Hokori, if you guys missed that match. It pretty much won them the Roche in the first match of the best of three. And now Lava, they pick up the Rubik, something that only two players in South America consistently do. And, well, two teams rather. It's Lava and uh, Thunder Awaken, as Matthew is also the other Rubik 4 player. A lot of people commented on this hero being like, super strong because of the changes it got this patch. Do you also find that? Because he has not been picked as often, um, Duster. I think the hero is still pretty good. You just need to have good spells to steal pretty much. But the only concern is his laning phase is not uh, that strong. Okay. And to be honest, is, is in this it... game, I don't, I don't like this game. Like, okay. Especially now that you have to play against Beastmaster, I, I don't see good spells to take Zane. Besides Grip, it's easy to stop Bane and still Grip. But the other spells don't look so good. And now with the Beastmaster, does Lava have a decent enough lane to deal with this Beastmaster? Is the, is the Ogre okay against them? Or are they going to pick a carry that deals with them too? Carry to deal with it. Because uh, the supports definitely don't... Uh, Beast can... Once he gets Dominator, no one can lane against him mm. at this point. What comes to mind as your favorite carries here against the Beastmaster RDO? Uh, PA for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I'm gonna say it again. Yeah, <laughs> TB is also good against Beastmaster in lane. Yeah. Uh, yes, because it has like very high armor and the, the meta, you can always kill the boars and you can al also kill the Beastmaster if your position 5 is strong with it. Which, which in this case is strong because it's an ogre. Ogre is no. very good. Ten seconds no. remaining. Do you like the TB in general against this draft as well? No. No? Five it's it's remaining. bad against... The, the early game is a big problem because Nepfire is so good against Terrible Like, you ulti from very yeah. far and you deal a lot of damage. And your uh, the lava lineup doesn't have any saves, so if you get X'd and you don't have a BKB, you're gonna always die from the Bolt plus Snap ulti combo. No, they ban it anyway, so we're not gonna get the chance to see Minos Terrorblade. Uh, the PA is still in the pool. Is is PA okay besides that as well, or is are you just picking her for the lane? Because Snapfire has similar uh, strengths against PA. Yeah, PA is good on lane against Beastmaster, and she can only fight with BKB on this game. But it's kind of what the hero is about. Like, okay. they, uh, PA can kill both of the supports with BKB and provide rush for his team. So I I like the pick. Nice. Looking at Pokemon Kings, they also themselves are missing a carry. Are you guys gonna wait? Well, actually, it depends on where the Konka goes. But uh, are you are they just gonna wait to see the core to core matchup and then pick up then, or is there anything that they, that you see for this lineup that you go, wow, I would love to see this pick? I expect Monkey King because it's <laughs> it's true. Actually, I can't believe that got through. That's crazy. He's the the Monkey King god. Well. What, what do you think in general of the Monkey King mid lane? Do you think it's like, if Mini plays it, it's good, but in general, it's not that great? Yeah, this is how I see the hero. I, I don't <laughs> like the hero. I don't like when I have a Monkey King in my team, but when I play against Mini and he has the Monkey King, I also don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, today, Yatoro actually released a, a tier list of carries, and he put Monkey King quite high, actually. He, was put, uh, he put A tier as the Monkey King, so he thinks he's quite, quite high. 
Yeah, Carry is a bit different because now Monkey Kings are building Battle Fury first item so they can go mm -hmm. Battle Fury BKB and get a lot of farm. Really? And the Monkey King, now that he has high armor, has a good lane. So he wins the lane and farm fast with the Battle Fury. Right, which is much better than the mid lane, which has a lot of bad matchups. That's going to be the Titan pick last for Lava. Probably their carry. So now up, okay, Kings. Do they need to pick a tiny counter here? It was amazing, but it's banned. Mm -hmm. What else comes to mind? We've seen Huskar a bit, but I think that's a bit of a tall order here. Not sure. Everything good's banned. The Life Sewer, the TV. Uh, TA is kind of weird against... I think TA is good. It has a good lane. The only problem is the Lash with the DPS, but besides mm. that, she's immortal with BKB. Okay. Alright, I, yeah, I'll be down. So you put the Conca mid, you get the TA to Benny, most likely. We'll see what Apple K Kings decides to go for, though, as they're thinking about this tiny. Okay! That's unexpected. Yeah, what's the. Uh... Can you explain the logic here, Duster? What do you see the, sh the strength of the Shadow in here? I feel like they wanted to play the Kanka carry and they need a more pause one here on the mid lane. Mm, okay. Yeah, he's gonna have a fine lane against Lash because he's ranged hero and uh, he actually does a lot of uh, building damage with the talent and stuff. How do you see him matching up against a Tiny? The Shadow Fiend? Yeah. yeah. Uh, is he, is I think. He, uh, I think it's fine because there's a lot of DPS. If he goes for the the BKB, he can he can for sure kill the tiny, and it's like double carry. It's Kunka with with buff with both buff and the Shadow Fiend. So I think it's a good pick if he gets away with a good lane. Okay, final predictions, guys. Are they all start with you? All right, I'll go Apple Kings. I'm cheering for them. Let's go Brazil. <laughs> that very objective prediction. Thank you, RDO. Duster. Duster. I, I'll go with Apple Kings. I really like this Shadow Fiend and I like the dual core of Shadow Fiend Kanka. They're gonna have good lanes and possibly snowball. So I'm cheering for them. As you see, you, you can't tell if Duster's biased. You gotta learn from that, RDO. He's, he's very good at justifying it. That's the Astini way. We're gonna, we're gonna see if Apple King Kings does take the first game against Lava, or if Lava shows us the strength of that tiny as we go over to game number one of the series with your wonderful casters, Gareth and Lacoste. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm in love with this Apple Kings draft as well. I was looking at this thinking they've got such a tanky lineup, very hard to kill. Aura's coming out with the Beastmaster, now the Shadow Fiend. I, I don't know, Lacoste, what, what are your thoughts? I, I love it. SF last pick. Yeah, a hero that we usually don't see. I was a bit uh, surprised that they decided to go for it, but uh, uh, it, it's one of those heroes that can like either like, go 0-4 and you feel like you're playing the <laughs> 4 versus 5 pretty much the whole game, or yeah. he can like completely dominate. Uh, it's going to be a mid lane Shadowfin, which I'm a bigger fan of. I think they just needed to put something on a mid lane and what it the put like Kunkka on the safe lane against uh, so he's... Mars and Rubik. So we're going to see like the, the Shadow Rays build. Yeah, yes. I, I, <laughs> <wasn't, God. laughs> I was not a fan of the safe lane Shadow. And people tried the it, passive you know, build. You know, you, you're literally not using the potential of the hero. Uh, same goes for stats. Like I'm personally not a big fan of like Gyro mm -hmm. that doesn't skill uh, Rocket Barrage in the laning stage, but we can leave that for later. Let's see, there might be a clash here, Gary. Yeah, they're all grouping up around this top bounty rune area. What have we got? Bane, Snap can start on an Ogre. This is the trouble, right? Both teams have very tanky targets that are difficult to bring down. So you've got this chip damage that's a little bit here, a little bit there. And they're all just going to run away and back off away from each other. No one wants to get caught up in an extended team fight while the creeps are all spawning. So it does look like we get the two for two bounties all even across the map. Does Kachu know that ward is there, though? No, it doesn't look like it. So Ogre's just going to wander down bot, while Dire and Radiant both keep their mid-vision up. Yeah, we didn't talk about Lava's lineup. I feel like this lineup doesn't care too much about the cooldowns. They can pretty much fight all the time. You have mid laner and carry that don't have, like, any abilities that they need to wait to be able to fight. So that's very good for them. So let's say Roar is used, both is used, uh, Snapfire, Ulti on top of that. Like, they can make use of that. And this top lane, uh, it's going to be super strong for uh, 
lava, a lot of harassment. Uh, Rubik plus Mars, like every single time Kunkan gets close, he's gonna get God's Rebuke plus Fade Bolt in the face. And he also invested a lot of gold in the small items, which means that uh, his item that he wants to have, the Helm of Iron Will, the most Imba item pretty much uh, in the game, especially early on, is gonna be delayed. So that means that Bane will need to bring some extra reach into this thing. And look at the harassment already. This is the yeah. second time. Yeah, I mean, Benny makes maybe a little misstep there. He goes around the creep wave that allows them, like you said, to get their double nukes in on him. And he had just salved as well. So he's like, I'm full HP. I can go and play the game. You can't. This Mars and Rubik are straight at your throat yet again. Spelling out that fade bolt. And th this is this is going back to the point you were making about the Shadow Fiend and why you don't like the stats build or the, ooh, the passive build as Bane gets speared, rebuked. Did pop his stick and nightmares up the Mars, transferred across to the Rubik as Benny's torrent will miss because of that. So again, well played by the Lava Boys. But yeah, if you've got a mana pool, use it. Yeah, exactly. Like, you, you want to use your spells because you want to use that mana region. Mid lane, Mini, he's going to be okay, but that's a lot of harassment. Uh, he needs to bring... Okay, he has a bottle coming up to him. Like, in terms of matchup, it's not a good matchup for Leshrac because Leshrac can't keep the distance from the Shadow Fiend and the... Uh, Leshrac should not die in this matchup unless he like overextends, makes a mistake. Uh, so maybe they just like felt, you know, it's a good Shadowfin game in terms of, uh, I don't know, more like a hero pool. Like they want to play it a bit more stable, you know, just want him to feel comfortable. But uh, yeah, Leshrac is going to do well. Leshrac does well against most of the range heroes on the mid lane anyway. Yeah. Like the only way he's going to die or be under threat is if he walks like blind up a ramp into triple rays. That's unlikely to happen. More likely we'll see these heroes rotate or have people come into their lane to look for those kills. And then bot lane, the one we haven't really touched on too much because it's Ogre Tiny against, <laughs> against Beastmaster Snapfire. Beastmaster Snap maybe with some kill threat, but Ogre Tiny looks like a, a very passive lane for now and just focused on farming. Yeah, I, I don't think they can get the uh, kill on Tiny that easily. Ogre might die if he, like, uh, put himself in a tough spot. Because they don't have, like, there's some synergy between, you know, Lil Shredder, the Blightstone, and all right, there we go. A lot of harassment on Dunai. Yeah, and Mini dying to... Well, yeah, start Lesh in the mid lane, so the Lava Boys, they kill the Bane top. And a solo kill from Lesh on the Shadow Fiend. Something that we, we didn't really expect there. And he had mana, he was playing very aggressively on a mid lane, and Shadowfiend, uh, you know, he's just a Shadowfiend. Th this is what I was worried, like, this is the last pick that was not, like, utilized uh, correctly, in my opinion. I was never a big fan of Shadowfiend anyway, but... Uh, oh, yeah. Those, <laughs> I mean, we've been casting together for a very long time, Gareth, you know, and this is also my favorite hero to kill in the game, so that's why, like, you just rotate on him, has no escape mechanism whatsoever. Maybe on level 6, now it, uh, it's a bit of different, because he has this uh, fear mechanic, but uh, most of the time you don't even get it. There's this combo on the top lane. Uh, yeah, Rubik in a little bit of trouble, but again, they've, they've got this telekinesis, they've got spear, they can drag people around and give them a little more safety to even maybe turn around and play aggressively on the Bane. Serum. So, um... Pretty low. Six stick charges up his sleeve though to play with. He's just gonna wander back, chase the Rubik. Yeah, to go back to the bottom yeah. lane, like little shredder. It uh, got Shadowfin's dying mid, hey. Leo style has hit level six and he just goes pulse nova wild, madly chasing the shadow fiend oh, and gets another kill. solo kill. He's gonna get a double kill, the cookie comes, but Leo Style's gonna give chase. He's not got much mana left, but he still gets the kill. This is just straight up feeding uh, from a Shadow Fiend, and he's already 0 and 2. They gave another one to Lash Rack. He's level 7. Shadow Fiend's about to crack level 5. This Oof. is rough. This is really rough. Like, this game could You kill Shadow Fiend like this? Yeah. You just look at him and go, No souls? You've got no souls? <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, it's, uh, it can easily snowball out of control uh, with the lineup that they got. Uh, Lesh Rack, uh, he even put a third point in Lightning Storm, which are like, he's dominating the matchup. Nice. Usually you don't get more than two. And I love this. Rubik uh, wants to keep the pressure. They see this catapult on a mid wave and they want to refill his bottle. Uh, Shadowfin can't show on a mid lane. Shadowfin shows he's dead. Like, we can even see Ogre trying to rotate, wrap around. So this is a dead tower. 
Yeah, and there's only really one place that the SF can be. He doesn't want to be in the triangle just yet. He wants to be in that dire top jungle stacking and farming, the kind of triple camp that, uh, you know, gyros and shadow fiends, whoever like to stack and build up bank there. And you're, you're right, it isn't just the river that comes mid. The ogres here, they're warding, they're pressuring, and moving Gotta into that off, area yeah, where they get the lift on the bane. Serum on the high ground, but he got the D ward. Yeah, I think so no I, more vision there, but tower's in trouble. They they should not uh, let this uh, too easily. Uh, like they planted a deep ward underneath, uh, like tier two that scouted things out. Uh, Snapfire decided to de-ward it, but I felt like they needed to play with the creep wave, like go aggressive and not allow uh, him to pull the creep wave back. Cause like tower's still probably gonna die. There's a Glyph available, Edict level 2, plus a double damage. This is a lot of trouble for Apple King of Kings. Yeah, this, this Ogre, tanky as he may be, does get blown up thanks to this Jupiter and Seram support duo being around. But I guess also if you also like look at the map state, sure you've got this 3v3 mid, you lose the Ogre, but Tiny is super happy bot lane. He did a ton of damage to this Beastmaster. He's clearing out the boars. Top lane Mars now has free farm and he's about to crack level 6. So Lava created a situation here where they've also stacked up Triangle to be able to play around Mars Arena and keep that momentum going. And look at this smoke. I like this a lot. Uh, just uh, straight up go away from the mid lane. They want to get Kill and Kanka, who needs one CS for level 6. Let's Ooh, see if tiny. he can get it. He cannot. They're playing top and bot as well at the same time. They kill a tiny, but there's the combo in onto that Benny Kunka. And can't you getting roared. Ogre stuck under his own tier one bottom, pops his stick, gets a bloodlust down, still dead. Jakiro so a two for one exchange. On a bottom it's just lane. towers falling now. Yep, uses bloodlust. Jakiro. <laughs> <laughs> Poor man, Jakiro. Uh, they can still defend this tower bottom. Like Beastmaster used the roar. Uh, it's not going to be as easy, but uh, yeah, without roar, they don't have that much. Uh, Snapfire, not yet level six, as you would expect, but uh, yeah, Kotaro just going to keep you back to bottom lane and. Uh, this is why Tiny is really good against the Beastmaster. The three grab does so much damage. Bane getting caught. That's a yeah. dead Bane. Tried to go for that top rune. Already spent his nightmare. A missed spear. Frank. But the finish Bro. from Frank. <laughs> Frank. That's his kill. Bro, you just used spear <laughs> and then he missed it and then steals the kill with God's review. He should definitely not steal the kills <laughs> from Lashrak, who like spent a lot of resources. At least he had the region rune in the bottle. So yeah, this mid tower, three points and edict, that's gonna go down. Let's see if Snapfire can deny it. He cannot. Mm. Nice try. Good attempt. Oh, they see the Bane TPing top, that, that deep ward. Spot Serem. Count you and Leo Stahl chase him down. Benny goes. X Mark and Boat in towards the left rack. Should be able to drag him into it with a stun and the raise is landing. Leo Stahl's dropping quickly and the cookie's there. Finish off the lash and good defense of their top jungle here by the Apu Kings. But it looks like Lava's not just done. They've got an arena. They want to continue fighting. Count you's being hounded by this Jupiter and Mini duo. But Kunka. Oh, it looks like Kunka just got enough distance. Away from the Mars, and he's got that armor as well to make himself yeah. increasingly tankier. Lava a bit too aggressive there. They should have uh, went for the tower instead, I think. In, uh, but uh, yeah, Lashrak uh, will be tanky enough. He's uh, deciding which items he wants to pick up. Uh, he had the uh, hood queued up, which uh, I think it's great against uh, everything that they got. Uh, but he's going for the Yule Scepter first. I mean, it's a great setup. It's one way to set things up. Uh, great against Kunkas combo. Uh, can stop the grip in the back lines. Uh, not right now because Bane is level 4, but uh, eventually it's really good to have. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Dunai managed to kill the tower. He's having a good time on a Beastmaster. Uh, someone needs to play with him in this bottom lane because Roar is available once again. Ideally, it would be Snapfire, who just got level 6. Yeah, just look for kills on whoever shows down there, right? Yeah, pretty much. Long range initiation, long range damage. Yeah, that Beastmaster so good at unlocking the bottom part of the map. Has his helm, took the tower, clears the jungle, and he basically forces one hero to be down there to keep clearing the waves. Mars is trying to do a similar job top. A couple of lava heroes smoking down towards bottom, maybe trying to get rid of that threat of the Beastmaster. This is all buying time, though, for, for Apu Kings to kind of catch up 
in terms of where they want to be as a squad. They, they want this early BKB on Shadowfiend, it looks like. Try and get their auras all stacked up, and then they can be a real menace. They do have a lot out. of minus armor and a lot of physical damage, like Inner Beast, the uh, Lel Shredder, Medallion, Shadowfiend, Aura, Kunkadil's ton of uh, physical yeah. damage. Uh, so their lineup like makes a lot of sense. I'm just a little worried about the execution, because uh, like this Tiny, he comes online super fast. Like uh, we're talking about the 15, 16 minute mark when he has like Shadow Blade, Echo Saber, plus a shard, and he's going to be ready to fight. Uh, He's been having a decent time. There's some stacks in the triangle for him. And the uh, big boy ogre here just gonna defend the tower. <laughs> I stand in front of the skeletons, defend my tower. Oh my god, oh, look at up. this. Plus 18 damage. It's not just oh. rally, it's the extra damage plus a maxed out inner beast on top of that. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty bonkers. That's good stuff. Yeah, this uh this Upper Kings lineup. Do you, do you reckon that they scale better into late game because they've got physical damage, minus armor, auras, or is it more of like a, a timing they want to hit with a with an Aegis with a Roshan? I, I don't think they play for first Roshan. Like ideally, they would want to get it. Of course, uh, I mean it's pretty easy to say. One team has Aegis, they they have an upper <laughs> hand compared to the other team. But uh, yeah, I, I feel like they're not gonna be able to like take these fights, uh, mm. especially in the next couple of minutes, because the BKBs are not gonna be online. I think uh, Benny also needs to adjust his item build and going armlet plus boots of travel. That's great. I love especially when you stay ahead, but you need to be on the top of the network to be able to utilize this. Uh, uh, yeah. Like you just, you're everywhere pretty much. You, you're not wasting any time. Uh, X mark uh, in the base, come back, full HP, full mana. But I think he might need a BKB, especially if like Lava wins another fight. And uh, they also have enough uh, damage for Roshan, especially with the Tiny and Lashrak. Because the Lashrak is uh, having a really good time. He found the Fairy Trinket on top of that Serum. He's gonna catch the break catch the gank for the team can they catch benny yes they can oh they do yeah that kunker a much bigger kill for them very nicely done by lava i thought it would just be the bane but the fact that frank is there to wrap in around the kunker gets them a nice double and yeah that, that kunker he bought boost of travel so that that indicates to me that they are aiming for i guess more of a later game play here from apu kings they don't have a like save. You said, it's gonna... like, once they're caught inside the arena, that's going to be a huge issue, especially now with mm -hmm. Frank picking up the Blink Dagger so he can easily set things up. Magical damage coming out from Lava is insane. Like, every single hero has some kind of a burst. Uh, seems like they they want to make something happen. They want to smoke uh, with the four heroes and uh, try to make something happen. Three, actually. BKB. Oh, Minion still doesn't have it. He's... Uh, 400 gold short. I mean, Cat is gonna catch uh, catch the smoke game yeah. as Bane did in the, the previous Ogre's turn. One. No core kill as a cherry on top, though, for them. And it does very much feel like Apu Kings, with all the single target they've got, you know, the Bane ulti, the roar, the fact that uh, you know this Kunker with the X mark is also pretty single target focused. They do need to be the ones imposing and making that first step. They. You know, they, you said they can't really escape from the arena. They can't really escape from initiation from lava. So if they're the ones being initiated on, things get pretty dicey. Yeah, we didn't on the other hand, much if they're the ones that I can initiate. About the Rubik, good. but it's a pretty damn good Rubik game against, the, like, you're stealing Grip, which is easy to steal. It's a channeling ability. Same goes for the Kisses. Beastmaster needs to be careful because this is what uh, he's going to aim for, or both. Like, these are the two abilities that he wants to grab, especially once Shadowfin picks up the BKB because they have no BKB piercing abilities. They would definitely love to have Roar. Frank, once again, hunting with the Blink Dagger. If they catch Mini, ooh, that'd be big. They do have a sentry, right? Yeah, Radiant Sentry on the high ground. They deward that dire observer. And Mini's invis. He's still trying to break forward with Kunker and Bane now leading the charge. They're grouped up as five Apu Kings to defend their triangle. And that means the rest of the map is wide open for Lava. And you can see Kataro TP's up top. Has some Ancients, of course, to clear out. As he has his Echo Saber. Shard Shadow Blade him. coming shortly. Yeah, you want to pick up the shard because it's delivered, a farming yeah. tool. Uh, you farm so much faster. Uh, he's one of the heroes, like uh, pretty much the only carry hero that you want to buy shard 15 minutes in. And also, this is going to be bloodlusted tiny. 
it's still level oh, one, man. but uh, yeah, that's that's just gonna hurt. Yeah, it's like we were talking the other day, right? When um, the tiny needed to get that blink, needed to get BKB, needed the Echo Saber, and that shard was delayed until like 25, 30 minutes in. This feels much more comfortable for Kataro. He's yeah, like, this was no, different. I have this space, was... I have time. It's much easier for me to swing a 15 minute shard. Yeah, this, the one you're talking about was the mid tiny. You want to like go for yeah, a different true. item build. Uh, uh, like you don't farm as much, you're much more active. You're still like keeping the net worth, but uh, you, I, I don't think you can like fit in shard early on as a mid tiny. Yeah, it's much more awkward. Well, immediate pressure onto tier two tower. Not a second ago, Tiny was clearing Ancients, and he's made his way all the way to this objective very quickly. Apu Kings are grouped up, and it looks like they want to smoke after shoving the mid-wave. Mini will clear it. And they will smoke, but where are they heading? Like, is it towards, like, a Roshan pit fight? Is it Radiant Triangle? Are they defending their own outpost? Uh, they want to take a fight near the Rosh pit, because right now they held Helm of the Overlord, so... If they like get two kills, they can easily transition that into Roche. Funka still no hunting, way. going for the torrent. They don't even get the ogre. Catch. Oh, that's rough. Look at this that's big really boy. They don't even get him. Wobbling his belly. Oh. Very much feels like lava have uh, have the read on Apu Kings though. Every time these moves are happening, they're immediately teeping back out, getting much more efficient grasp of the map. I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> back in Dire Triangle again. Another D-Ward incoming. Benny? Benny wants to start it, though. But he's just Where's been counter-initiated on by Frank. Uh, there's a split earth on Benny. Kisses are coming, but Benny's about to die. Leo style, he's floating around and doing tons of magic damage. The challenge being though will clear him up. The last rank's gone. Now Kataro, he's got to run. The turnaround here from Alpha Kings with that SFBKB. Does get them a one for one trade. Now Rubik on the high ground with Requiem, Requiem but he's been stunned get up. It off? The cookie got cancel uh, the cancel the Requiem. Nicely done by the Snapfire. Serum will lose his life now as the Beastmaster charging forward, chain stunned up, no chance. He's just going to get taken down by God's Rebuke and the right clicks of Frank's Mars. While Mini Shadow Fiend pummeled by the Tiny and Jupiter, a snap fire, no way to run. The Shadow Blade Tiny comes back in to slap them down. Man, Frank is really good at the KSing. Him blinking in using the God's <laughs> Rebuke, it was a good initiation by him. But... <laughs> Yeah, it was super good. It looked, uh, you know, it looked a little bit scary with a back and forth in the first three, four seconds of that fight. But when Tiny comes back in, full HP, full mana, ready to swing, you know you're in trouble. Now, Benny chasing Frank up to high ground. Ogre here, gonna tank up some of the spells, and Kataro once more, he's got a big old tree and he's not afraid to use it. Spear, slam, slap down you go. Can't you the Ogre on a killing spree now. Somehow gets the final touch on Thanks that Benny Kunker. I started choking. Same, You're right. same thing I did during You're my right, professional buddy. career. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> I like they, they're executing these fights really, really good. They understand like once the BKBs are down. By BKBs, I mean one BKB because Kunkka doesn't have one. He has uh, this boots of travel, which is not good. And now they're gonna turn this into Roche. Tiny uh, with the Shadow Blade, Echo Saber, and Shard is the most farm hero in the game and can easily kill Roche with that. And then he can start hot hunting. I want to see picks up the ages i think they should give this to last track even though like tiny would love to pick it up but still last track did there's a serious amount of damage and he needs to get close which means that he's gonna get the roar he might even get like requiem but uh, still like they're gonna give it to tiny i it might be yeah. like uh, i think the deciding factor might be we want to kill tier two towers and it's much easier to siege with the uh, tiny in front <laughs> Yeah, it's like when you have that, that option, like a Juggernaut or a Tiny or whoever it is, just to put him on the high ground, right? Know that he's tanky enough or he's got the ability to, to get away with maybe losing one life, but it will force the opponents to spend a lot of spells to do it. And then he comes back with a second life. Hey, it's very Beastmaster tough to back to doing so his regular job. Yeah, something that we said, uh, them not having... Uh, any cooldowns they rely on. Oh, oh Benny, Benny, Benny. Long they found him! Frank comes in, spots the Kunker. 
And that's BKB delayed even further. Zero, five, and three on this safe lane Kunker now. Not being a good game for Benny whatsoever. Well, this boot of travel kind of ruined his game, I would say. It's 2,000 gold down mm. the drain. He would have uh, almost had a BKB if he didn't go for it, but uh, it is tough. I mean, uh, also, you don't want to have like Kunka with uh, brown boots. You, you, you want to, yeah, you want to have <laughs> like an upgrade, at least a face boot. So BKB shouldn't be like uh, as fast as we're talking about it. But uh, now, like, mm. two supports are having a really good time. On side of Lava, you have Rubik that has a nightmare, which is a save. And he's about to pick up the shard with the Eater Lands, found a bit by Philly, which means that he's going to be able to scale and also Ogre with the Force Staff. So they like lock onto the target with their combo. And if they use a lift or a Force Staff, uh, so Upper King of Kings, they need to commit heavily. They need like BKB and they need to use at least two ultis to get a kill on one of the cores. And they might not even get it. So th this game looks really rough for them. Yeah, and again, that comes back to this, this very heavily single target focus from Apu Kings with their ulties, their, their team fight initiation. All lines up onto one hero. But there's Tiny on the high ground. Like you said, Aegis in his inventory forces the glyph pretty early on. And the DD rune is going to get scouted by Lesh's courier down bottom. My finest creation, look at this. I want to see some ice frogs in the chat right now. Well, Diabolic Edict plus Tiny. <laughs> Towers die even through backdoor regen. Oh, they will retreat a sec. Give the Apu Kings a, a moment to think about their worries and their troubles. Oh, there's a gauntlet over here. I've seen Amar dropping mantles, but uh, is this a South American thing where they drop gauntlets? Where? Where is it? Uh, where Tier 2 Tower is. Dire Tier 2, the right one. Ah, oh, just dropping a gauntlet. I mean, it used to be a thing in medieval times, you know, you, you have a knight slap another knight with his gauntlet, challenging him to a duel. People slapping each other with gloves, saying, come on, let's have a fight then. And that's what Tiny is saying to Kunka. Tosses him, spears him, Benny just disappears. Massive BKB. He walks in. He didn't get it off. To his own death. He, well, he had BKB and didn't use it. And that's just going to be a disaster now for the Apu Kings. Losing their Beastmaster as these lava heroes come DD straight up to high ground. Gary. 800 damage. Oh, it's, it's over, isn't it? One, two, three hits to kill the range barracks. Uh, they, they, they might call this one because it looks pretty damn over. Yeah, say goodnight to your buildings. What, that, that's basically 900 damage a swing with, <laughs> with Echo Saber as well. Two sets of barracks gone. And they've lifted Nightmare Roar. Kill. Shadow Fiend dead and GG is called. No chance. For the Apu Kings and Lava will take game one. Uh, this is what happens when you like don't, uh, I would say, utilize your last pick. Where this hero is really weak compared to other mid laners. One of the reasons why we don't see this hero across the other regions. It's very risky. Like you need to be able to like completely dominate the laning stage. Uh, the, the way they played around mid was also good. Like he got a solo kill, then he got another one. He was Twice. level seven yeah. <laughs> while Shadowfin was level four. And it was a tough one, like forcing rotation. And as you said, like uh, this allows Mars to get free farm against Kunkka and allows Tiny to get free farm against the Beastmaster. Kataro had a really good one. Uh, they also like the smoke breaks uh, from Ogre were top tier uh, positioning wise. Yeah. Just a good, good performance from Lawa in game number one. Yeah, well, I mean, everything went really well for them. The fact that every move it felt like Apu Kings tried to smoke from their own triangle or from their own mid tier two into top jungle, into bottom jungle. Uh, yeah. Ogre was there, right? Ogre was just sitting and waiting for them. They were all TPing out across the map and getting much more effective use of the map. But yeah, Lava just looking like the better squad in that one, even. Uh, even with a beautiful Shadowfiend draft, I've got to say. I, I did like the look. It looks juicy, but it wasn't to be. But we'll pass it back to Arvo and the boys. See what they thought, because they were both on the side of Apu Kings. They'll be here shooting. Very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Gareth, for that. We're, we're here right now, and the uh, panel indeed went the way of Apu King Kings. Uh, maybe the Brazilian bias kind of showing there, guys. Uh, what what happened to your fellow countrymen? Huh? What what uh, what transcurred in that draft? 
or Dio, I see you smiling a little bit more, so I'm gonna pick on you first. Uh, so I, I I saw two problems: the the solo queue stuff happening on mid, yes, and they they never used the beast beastmaster. Like they played three lanes the whole game, the Apple Kings. Uh, so beastmaster was never like strong. He they never used his vision, his creatures. They never took the bottom tier two tower because Kunka was always playing top. So I think it was a big issue for them to snowball and create space for Shadow Fiend. Uh, Duster, can you give me some insight as well? Yeah, like, uh, this is the lava we expected to see, pretty much. They can play outplayed uh, Apple Kings on lanes, I feel. Uh, Kunk and Bane shouldn't lose top. Like, you pick two, two of the strongest laning heroes, pretty much. Uh, and you still can't stop Mars from farming, and then you last pick Shadow Fiend into the matchup you know. And you get solo kill twice, so yeah, I feel like mm. this was a complete outplay from Lava. Right, so you, you stand your ground in terms of the draft. You think the draft was actually pretty good if it had been maybe better executed this game? Yeah, it's for sure a playable draft, but they needed to win lanes to snowball. Like you have Beastmaster, you want to have strong mm. cores that can just group up with Beastmaster and take towers, but it never happened. Uh, both lanes that you pick to win lose, so kind of breaks your draft already. There's something that Apple King Kings has struggled before. Uh, they're kind of a feast or famine team when it comes to the lanes. And usually after a game like this, they overcorrect and they play really strong lanes and they play them as hard as possible. Uh, would you like to see that, Duster? Just to try to concentrate on the early game as much as possible next game. Yeah, I think this game is a wake-up call for them. Mm. Gotta step up on the laning phase, pay more attention and just focus more. I feel like they weren't prepared to love aggression on the early game. Before we take a break, I'd like to ask you, RTO, what are some of the great plays that you saw here from Lava? Some of the things you enjoyed from them? Uh, I like their, their macro gaming. Like, the, the Lash killed two heroes mid, and then Apu went with three heroes mid, and he went top instead of staying mid. So he took the top tower, then he opened the mid tower. They got, like, two or three smoke ganks at early game, and all smoke ganks were were right. They also dodged the enemy smoke ganks. Like, their mi micro pl playing impressed me a lot. Okay. And with that, let's see if a game two will also go the way of Lava, this incredible macro game, or if it's going to be Apu King of Kings who forces a game three. We're going to come back in around a couple of minutes as we take a small break and then come back with a pre-panel for game two of Lava and Apu King of Kings. See you guys then. <laughs> 